Hey everybody, so this uh, video is dedicated to St. Tristan's sword, which is a great example of Bonham's mastery of playing kind of inverted funk type grooves. Um, I want to look at the main beat of this song and kind of dissect it because I've gotten a few requests for it and actually I think it's really worth um, kind of delving into. Um, I'm going to play the beat and and then I'm going to slow it down and, and try to deconstruct it a little bit so you can see how the different uh, parts, the different limbs are uh, interact with each other and how they're um, played separately from the from the the whole group. Okay, so um, the introduction to the song is slightly different. He plays uh, a little less on the snare drum in the introduction, and then as soon as Jimmy comes in and starts with that scratching kind of riff, he changes it up a little bit. So for example, the introduction, he's playing this. So let's look at that. There's a lot of um, uh, interaction with ghost notes with the left hand playing off of the downbeats on the hi-hat. So the hi-hat is pretty much just doing this. There's a very soft kind of um, ghost stroke there between the rim shots, uh, which are played with the left hand on the upbeats, like this. So you've got. That's the first bar of the beat. I'll play it slower. So you can see where there's a point where the bass drum and the left hand are actually playing together, but the left hand is much softer in the stroke than the main strokes that it plays, like this. So right there you've got the left hand alternating and the bass drum playing with it on the second left hand stroke. Right there. But that's not really accented. So it's like this. But the accent comes after that second left hand stroke. Right there. Which is on the upbeat. Then the beat continues like this. But that also has some subtle ghosting going on, which ends up sounding like this. You gotta. So there's a very soft stroke after the rim shot. Then again, another rim shot. And sometimes, most of the time, you hear a bass drum double, like this. Right there. So that's...
So um, hopefully this is clear that for a good amount of this rhythm that he's playing, he's filling in the spaces of these hi-hat notes with left hand strokes on the snare drum. actually a good exercise to do to get accustomed to that feeling. You can simply play downbeats on the hi-hat, upbeats on the snare, and then practice playing the bass drum along with the left hand snare um, ghost notes. hitting together. Now in this particular beat, they don't line up uh, that often. There's only a couple times where the bass drum and the snare ghosting actually line up. But it's still, it has that feeling, which um, I call it inverted because it almost sounds like it's topsy-turvy. It's not a, a classic two and four backbeat kind of groove. The accents on the snare are actually coming on offbeats. Let's see. So you've got one, two, three, four. Boom, boom, pat, boom, pat, boom. So that's three and three and four. Boom, pat, pat, boom, pat, boom, pat, boom, pat, boom, pat. So if you count it, it sounds kind of like this. That's without any ghosting and obviously without the hi-hat. Those are just the snare accents, which are rim-shotted. Once again, three, four. Now when it moves to the guitar, when the guitar comes in, um, the snare hits are, again, slightly, um, uh, there's, there's more of them, it's more active, and that is this rhythm, three, four. some variation in the bass drum. Sometimes he's playing just all single strokes with the bass drum. Sometimes you can hear a very subtle uh, double stroke like this. Okay, so now I'm going to integrate all the ghosting that goes on, but I'm not going to put the hi-hat rhythm in, so you can just focus on the bass drum and the snare groove at that point. Here we go. Three, four. Okay, now I'm going to put the hi-hat in and I'm going to leave the snare out so we can just focus on the hi-hat and the bass drum part. And I'll first do the first um, 
section, whatever that is, eight bars before the guitar comes in. So this is the introduction. Okay, now I'm going to do the next section, which is where the guitar enters, where the snare is more active. going on to the next phrase in the uh, in the riff okay so now I'm gonna play all the parts together and um, I'm gonna play it much slower so you can hopefully hear each individual disparate drum part clearly And that's about it. That's uh, sort of a very quick breakdown of Bonham's drumming on St. Tristan's Sword. An incredible groove, incredibly creative and funky. Um, I just think that uh, clearly Bonham was special for so many reasons, but especially I think uh, for these incredible grooves that he came up with to complement the music. It's such a musical drummer. Um, that's it. And uh, oh yeah, I'd just like to say Terry and I had a very nice uh, visit over at uh, Drugan's Drums here in the Chicagoland area. They're actually in Des Plaines, Illinois. Um, if you haven't heard of them or aren't familiar with them, haven't checked them out, go to their website and uh, take a look. They've got some really, really cool stuff. Just a huge array of vintage drum gear, cymbals, and guitars actually, and amps as well. And they also have um, recording capabilities there. They have a couple really nice recording rooms and boards, and uh, they're available for, uh, for studio rental for sessions. So check out the guys there, um, really nice guys, Johnny Drugan and his brother Brian. Awesome place. So I um, hope you enjoyed this video and um, I welcome your feedback. Thanks very much.